Hi folks and welcome back to the Man Cave. Um, after the, uh, what I thought was a success of my Lathwaite's wine box layout, uh, I decided I could probably have a go at doing the same sort of concept uh, but smaller. So what I decided to tackle was uh, an old fashioned wooden pencil case. Now granted it's a reasonably large wooden pencil case with a sliding lid uh, but I thought yeah worth a go um, so let's see how I got on okay so how are we going to start this project so uh, as you can see it's a fairly large traditional uh, wooden pencil case with a sliding lid so the way I'm going to tackle this is the same as I've done my Lathwaite's wine box layout so uh, this will basically be the layout inside and turning this around will become a cover for the fiddle yard. So fiddle yard is probably where I'm going to start. So first job was to create the fiddle yard. So piece of Kato track uh, and that's glued onto a couple of bits of plywood and uh, I've used the connectors on the Kato uh, they will ultimately locate onto the track that is inside the box itself. So I've cut a hole, as you can see there, in the side of the pencil case. So the actual part that is going to be the track bed effect effectively inside the layout, or diorama really, is another piece of Kato track on a piece of ply some plastic card along the front which I've put some styrene strip on as well I'll probably paint that up like uh, concrete I shall feather the track bed in using some milliput to make it look less uniform less toy like so I'll be building everything on this so that I can then put that into the layout like so um, it's much easier for me to build this outside the box than it would ever be trying to create it all inside this area here because that's just a bit too tight to get my big hands in. Uh, so as you can see, the fiddle art, fiddle yard, let's just move that over. So that connects onto the Kato track there and that all keeps that nice and rigid and holds that all in one place. I've connected the wire to the uh, track already, so there's a, a live uh, feed there ready for the controller. So how I addressed this uh, cover for uh, effectively the, the pencil case that will be the cover for the fiddle yard, I drilled a little hole in the end of that um, handle, I suppose you'd call it, uh, and inside that hole I've inserted a rare earth magnet, one of these little tiny magnets. So if I move that over a bit so you can see it, let's get, let's get in the room. There's a little rare earth magnet there as well. So this basically slides in like that and that locates there and holds it in place. So spinning it round, let's just move it round so you can see. So that's essentially what you end up with. So that just locates in like that with a magnet. Simple as that. So here's our starting point then. So uh, this layout needs a theme. Now, uh, my colleague at work, a uh, friend of mine, uh, Mark Dwyer, fellow YouTuber, and he uh, exhibits his layouts uh, jointly with me at uh, Model Railway Shows, he came up with a very, very good idea. He looked at the letters uh, wooden pencil case and if you uh, rework the letters for wooden pencil case it comes up with codec weapons line so this will become a royal army ordnance uh, depot so a, a military layout if you will so where do we start okay so we need a platform so what i've done there is a piece of foam board um, some plastic card in this case it's sort of corrugated style um, I've just taped this piece of uh, corrugated plastic card to the back to sort of simulate maybe a, some kind of fence at the moment uh, just to get a feel of what this uh, could look like so if we insert that 
into the box like so. That is going to sit in there like that. So I thought, right, well, we need something either end to introduce the uh, train into the layout and maybe something so it doesn't just stop here or it looks like it might be able to go a bit further. So what I thought maybe a variation on uh, the sort of ash pit kind of arrangements uh, that they used on railways in wartime to, to cover uh, steam engines when they were um, sort of firing up, uh, getting up to steam, so they couldn't really be spotted from the air. They would they would do that under cover. So uh, imagine if you if you like that this would go on a lot further. Same for the other side. So this is made out of uh, plastic card once again. So thin embossed plastic card doesn't have to be particularly strong. It's not going to bear any weight and it's not going to be moved around once it's glued in. Uh, and I sort of make this out of bits of plastic art that I've got left. And while we're on the subject, I never throw anything away, uh, much to my wife's horror. Uh, but what you really need to achieve is, is a little box of stuff like this, because it's all different embossed plastic art and you never know when these little bits are going to come in handy. So I tend to keep all of those uh, and they're really, really useful. Uh, likewise, I've got another little box here full of odds and ends, little bits and pieces that you know you never know when all this stuff's going to come in handy, particularly when you scratch build a lot of bits and pieces like I do. So uh, I, I often go to my, my little uh, caches of goodies there to, to help me with my builds. So there we go, we've got um, our two sort of entrances, or entrance and exit effectively, uh, to the layout. So obviously we've got to introduce something to the back. I did a little bit of research on Royal Army Ordnance Depots, uh, um, weapon stores, things like that. So what I've done, I've built um, a, a fairly typical looking storage um, hanger, um, which will sit in like that. I'm not sure exactly whether it be central, probably be uh, offset to one side. Uh, like this. So that once again is embossed plastic uh, with some styrene strip to make the uh, the doors. So I've been collecting up a few other bits and pieces. So wait for a minute. So another little box of bits. So I've got um, a little matador truck, engaged matador truck from Oxford diecast. So I think that will sit in sort of there, something like that. And then I've got some other bits and pieces that I've picked up at shows and all sorts. So I've got a yard crane that I might try and work in there somewhere. I've got some uh, crates, which will double up quite nicely as uh, sort of ammo boxes and weapons boxes. I've got some uh, oil drums. Uh, these little bits and pieces I can probably make some pallets out of. I might make some pallets with some tarpaulin coverings. Uh, and I've also got some of this light strip left. This is health adhesive, so I've bought this little battery holder with a switch in it, which is the same as I used on my Lathwaite's layout. So that will get attached to the underside inside here, uh, so that I can actually illuminate the layout. I should just stick that onto the underside there. Uh, and out of my uh, lolly sticks, I, or coffee stirrers that I tend to use for everything, I've made a little light baffle, so that will just glue up under there so it will hide um, the battery holder and stuff like that. Uh, so that's where we are so far. Um, stay tuned and uh, watch the progress. Right, thanks for sticking with this. Um, as you can see we've now applied a bit of paint. So uh, this was just primed uh, a bit of whitish grey for the sky. I've applied some uh, dirt to the tracks with an airbrush. Um, and also painted the platform. That's all been given an oil wash to dirty it up a bit. Uh, and I've sprayed the front, it's sort of like a concrete kind of a uh, arrangement with some dirt along the bottom there. So this is now ready for uh, populating with my buildings and other bits and pieces, which I've also been painting. So what I've done here is, uh, this is basically uh, airbrushed in a, 
a suitable green colour, which I mixed up. Uh, I wanted to give this whole layout a, a, a feeling of depth because there's not a lot of depth to it. So by using shadows uh, and painting techniques, I was hoping to, to make it uh, appear that it's deeper than it actually is. So I've applied some shadowing uh, around the building with uh, an airbrush. I've also given it an oil wash, um, which has gone into all the corrugations, which uh, looks quite effective, and then given it a dry brush with some um, artist's oils in a much lighter green just to bring out the raised detail on it so uh, i've done that and also the two little um i suppose you'd call them portals for the ash pits at each end of the layout so they're done uh, also i've been painting all the other little bits and pieces so we've got the crane there crates uh, sandbags and also inside the store um, i've created a sort of false back um, with the actual stores themselves so uh, painted all those up uh, so the next stage I guess is to start fixing some of this in place uh, and see what it all looks like ah you've caught me um, yes I, I was just having a little interlude um, anyway let's move that out of the way so I've now glued everything in place so as you can see all my little buildings are, are in place um, I've made some signs um, and also I've added some troops now I've got a bit of a bugbear with uh, with this at the moment um, nobody makes N-gauge military personnel really I know that some of the German manufacturers do but you can't get British troops or anything like that in N-gauge so I've had to just use ordinary figures and kind of get the scalpel out and make them kind of look like troops. Uh, so let me just see if I can get, uh, let's see if we can focus in a bit so you can get a better view. There we go. So I've I've made uh, Royal Army Ordnance Corps troops, um, which I, I think are passable, just about. Uh, but yeah, so um, anybody listening that is. Uh, contemplating producing more figures in any way uh, get a grip because we do need some military figures because uh, military railways are quite popular um, and it would be nice to have some uh, ready-made uh, for us military modelers anyway so that's what we're at now so I think the next stage is really to get this actually put inside the pencil case uh, and we'll go from there, so stay tuned. Sergeant, Sergeant, it's over. They've surrendered. That's why the church bells have been ringing. Well, thank the Lord for that, laddie. But look lively. These wagons coming in will still need loading. As always, thanks for watching, and remember, please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you all the next time. Cheers.